Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. In this video, I'm taking off the uh, brackets for the convertible top, the hinge base brackets where the hinge pins go in and all where the top connects to and does all its magic uh, where it joins to the body. So here's one here and you'll see it's already a little loose and I have already taken off the, the driver's side one. But I did record it and it'll be coming right after this intro. So it uh, went pretty good um, except the I broke a couple of heads off the bolts. They're rusted in more than anything else that I've encountered so far in this car. Uh, so I have this one left in here and I broke two bolts here and I think I broke one, just one on the other side. And now, yeah, so there's these two bolts here and then I have one left in here that I'm having an awful, awful time getting out. Anyway, I'll continue working on it and uh, we'll get it off. It's just the one bolt left now, so we'll get it off. And then I'm going to go underneath the car and I'm going to take the gas tank down because I want that out of here. And it's been drained of fuel for the most part. There may be a little bit residual left in it. And if I have time in this video, which I believe I probably will, I'll drop the, the bumper brackets, which may mean that I'll have to zip cut that square tube off of the uh, trailer hitch that's on there. And that's not a big job, I just said I wanted the gas tank out before I did a lot of cutting down there. So, enough chitter chatter, so let's get at her. There we go. Uh, so like I said in the intro, I broke two of these bolts off and there are only three that actually hold this down. And I have uh, the two at the, at the back end and one at the front. Now this one at the front has been really stubborn so I'm going to have to drill it. I can't get in there and cut it with anything. Well, I might be able to get in there with uh, my air saw and give it a cut but I think just drilling it out, I'll try that first. The only issue I have with drilling is to get a direct line on it, I'm gonna to have to put an extension on the drill. But that's no, no problem, I think I have one. Um, on the other side over here came off fairly easy, mainly because I broke, again, a bolt. But I broke a bolt there, and I'll have to get that out. That one was fine, and this one up here came out fine. It's just that that guy over there. So let's get it out, and then they'll be out of the way, and we'll head down underneath and start doing the tank so I can do some zip cutting on the body here with that gas tank gone. I decided not to drill it out and then go through all that process because I couldn't find my extension. But what I do have is a uh, carbide bit, my uh, air die grinder. It's a double cut carbide bit. It's quite sharp. And I'm just going to knock the head off that thing. Alright, so let's go.
Okay, that's done. A bit of a mess there, but now I have something to hook onto. That actually is turning. It just did. A, I lost the ability to get a wrench on. It kept slipping. So there it is. That bracket and limit switch is off. And uh, now we can go underneath and uh, go after the uh, fuel tank. Okay, before we uh, drop the tank, we need to get rid of this filler tube. I don't think there's enough room. Well, I don't know if there's enough room for it to go to the passenger side to get off the filler tube or not. So I'm going to unhook the filler tube up here. It has to come out anyway. So I'm going to do uh, those four screws in there and see if I can, <coughs> excuse me, and see if I can pull that filler tube out. Let the filler tube take out. So it's, it looks to be 5 sixteenths. First I'm going to take the filler door off right here. So there should be two screws. And this is what I'm using, a 5 sixteenths. Oh, if I can get them off. <laughs> they seem to be on there. Alright. That's not working. So let's try these. See if we can get the tube out and leave that on. I have to get some deep creep on those apparently. My favorite go-to so far. So these are like fairly long screws like that. Like I say 5 16 head. Make sure. Yeah, 5 16 and there's four of them. Hopefully they all come out. And maybe we can get that filler tube without taking the door off. I don't want to strip those out too much. There, another one. Yeah. Gonna be in your way some of this, guys. So. It's unfortunate that some of these places you just can't you can't get the camera and the tools in there at the same time and do the work. There's bolt number or screw number three and the last one. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens. Alright, let's take the collar off if we can get it off. Nope, it's all going to go this way. So I may as well leave the cap on it. Whew, smells. <laughs> I'm going to see what I can do on the inside here. Well, there it is. That took a little bit. That gasket. Obviously is not in good shape. Have to get a new one of those. Not going to reuse that. Um, this filler neck tube is, whew, that's any, indica any indication of what the tank looks like inside. There might be a brand new tank going on this, but I'll check the uh, green car, see if it's any better. I somehow doubt it. So if you've never had one of these apart before, which I haven't, but now I have, I can show you what I know. <laughs> so there's the, uh, outer tube, the large tube, and inside the large tube is this tube, right there. And then in, inside of the big tube is another tube which the gas flows down through and then this gap here is to let the uh, air come out so you can burp the tank while it's being filled. So that's how that all works. And then there's also another rubber gasket inside that's the one that was giving me the issue if that gasket were uh, or that tube had not been so rusty 
like down in here. Actually, it was just on this. It was just hung up on that. I gave it a little pry and it came out. Bent this flange a tiny bit, but I'll just tap that back in place. And there's a screw holding that. Uh, actually, there's a couple screws. They're not screws. That's probably why I ripped it. They're, uh, they're not even screws. They're just push, little plastic push pins holding that gasket in. But that gasket was brittle. But it's, and there's this metal. I don't know if that's part of it or not. <laughs> not sure what that is. That looks more like a jackknife setup. Anyway, I don't think that's part of the filler tube. Uh, so a push pin up there, plastic push pin, and a plastic push pin down here to hold that filler tube in. All right, so let's drop the tank. So yeah, a little sidebar note. That uh, thing I thought was a jackknife body is actually a set of uh, spark plug gap setter tools. Little tiny ones. Uh, they're in bad shape. They, uh, they fell apart when I started to fiddle with it some. So pretty rusty. But that's what it is. I don't know if you can see it or not, but they have the, uh, the measurements right on them. And then these little are for setting the, uh, the strap, bending the strap back and forth. Ah, cool. All right, down by the fuel tank uh, bolts, I did get them uh, some deep creep yesterday, actually, so they should be reasonably freed up. Um, so I'll do this side here. I've already disconnected the uh, fuel sender wire harness, but I just have to slip the hose off the thing. You can't see it off the uh, fuel the fuel line hose off the tank, and then take these two things off. So let me get at her, and uh, I don't know if you'll see me do the fuel fuel line hose or not, but you'll be able to see me do this. I'm going to put you on uh, time lapse because this is not really exciting stuff, but there's one on this side and one on the other side. Okay, I ended up snapping both off, twisting the bracket a little bit, but I'll straighten that out, the bolts, I'll just get new ones. Uh, they were rusted on there pretty good, and I can't get at them with anything much. I tried a vice grips on the other side, and in the end they still snapped off, and I don't want to put a torch in here. So, it's out now, so I'll drop the tank down, and uh, that'll be out of the way, and then we'll go after the trailer hitch. That wasn't too bad other than breaking those two hanger bolts off yeah pretty straightforward um, just the fuel line and then the uh, fuel sending power right there or a wire harness this tank has it's a little tube I think it's brass actually it looks brass that runs from the very top of the tank and it just goes under this uh, skirting so it's like a vent in itself I guess that uh, keeps the tank from uh, bulging when it's uh, hot out or contracting and then squishing in when it's cold. Usually that's done through the vented cap, but maybe these didn't have a vented cap on them. I don't know. Anyway, there it has the original uh, backer on it. And these tanks also, if you're not a tank person, they also have a drain hole in them. It's a little high up, but you can take it out and drain it. I'm not going to bother. And I don't know what it looks like inside. Let's see if we get a light in there. Let's give me. A, let's see if I can find a light, and we'll see. All right, let's see what's in there. I got a little light. Oh yeah. This may not focus very well, but holy smokes. Yeah, I don't know about reusing this tank. She's pretty rough. <laughs> It may just be a waste of time trying to do something with that. I'll see what the price of a new one costs. But this is a long way out yet anyway. 
But yeah, I'm gonna write this tank off for now. I'm gonna get it outside because it's already stinking up the garage. So I'm gonna put this one outside and get rid of it for now. All right, I'm set up now. I'm gonna, I got light camera set up for a time lapse to heat these, try to get these bolts out. I'll do this side, see if we can get them off. And uh, if I can't get it to drop down with the trailer hitch on, which it looks like it should, but that doesn't mean it will. Um, we'll go after uh, zip cut. We'll zip cut that off. I'd rather do that zip cut it, cutting on this piece there. I'd rather do that on the, on the bench, not under the car. But it's no big deal. Let's try it. Nothing to lose. Okay, I got three bolts out. Now, we got a problem with this one. It's in behind this uh, hanger, spring hanger, shackle hanger. So the, the big thick washers on all of them were broken. You can see that one in there is broken. So what I'm gonna do is take a hammer and try to pound that out. Maybe I can move this whole bumper back some. Okay, well, that one on the, on the other side, this one here next to this uh, shackle, Whew, she was a hard one to get off. So, um, it looks like this outer mount will come off by itself. So I have to pull out some bolts. And I don't want to stand under this because I don't know how much that's coming out pretty easy. I'm worried about this dropping down the trailer hitch. So, but I'm going to try to get these outer mounts off just like so. Easy. Look at that. Laying on my back here. There's the outer mount on the passenger side off. I may end up having to do those bolts up there or cut that off. <laughs> All right, let's go to the other side. Let me see. All right, let me get this off. I'll put you on time lapse and we'll see what we can do with it. Oh, there's one trailer hitch off. <laughs> the people that welded the Ranchero trailer hitch on must have been the same as the Thunderbird trailer hitch. Must have been the same people. They welded it right to the, to the brackets. Anyhow, it's off. Now I'll snip those brackets off when I get a chance. And here's what she looks like underneath. <sighs> Overall, it come off pretty easy. That balance, that rear balance is in... Uh, is in nice shape, really. I expected it to be full of holes under here because it was a lot of buildup. It looks like it's been fixed. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say until you start digging at it what's going on there. This is full of filler there, so either it was damaged 
or uh, rusted out. It's there though, so I don't think it's rusted out. I think it was just pushed up. What's it look like up underneath here? Oh no, I think it was just dented and they didn't they didn't straighten it. They just mudded it over it. So that balance is in pretty good shape. Same on the other side. Anyway, so that's how I got that off. Whew. Hang on guys, I'm going for a ride. So I ended up breaking uh, on these little uh, pieces here, ended up breaking bolt off on each side, same on both sides. One bolt came out, one bolt broke off. No big deal. Pain, a little bit of a pain, a little extra work. But I mean, it's been pretty good so far. Only a few broken bolts, so I'm not complaining. Well, there you go. Well, I really don't know what I'm going after next. Uh, that's the tank, the bumper brackets. Oh, and these have to come off. Let's do that right now. So, this is pretty straightforward here. These just have uh, just a little uh, 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 hairpin. That's the word. That's the words I'm looking for. Hairpin, and they just pull out and slip off. So I'll do it, and I'll get right back to you. But that's all there is to it. It's pretty straightforward. These are the uh, supports or the limiters or whatever they call them to keep the trunk lid from going back. To tipping back too far it's just the stoppers and then there's also the cylinder limit switches limit switches are still here too that need to come off so I'll get those off and uh, I'm gonna continue thinking about what I'm gonna do next there's still a lot of like little miscellaneous things like that little harness has to come out uh, there's a few little things here and there but for the most part, other than the windows and the trim around the front windows, the front window rather, and the, the wind door windows, uh, this car is pretty much stripped. The little trim over there where those quarter windows were. And the rear end is still in it. But other than that, she's just about stripped out. So let me get these off and uh, see how that goes. I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. All right, got these arms off. And like I said, they're pretty straightforward. I just took, I put them all back together the way they were so I don't lose them. Really all they are is a washer on one side, washer on the other, and a pin and a, uh, a one of those hairpins. Yes. Why well, can't I never think of that? And these limit switches came off easily. The difference with these limit switches and a lot of the other little parts is that they appear to be a fine thread. Uh, bolt holding them in there so that's something I'm going to keep those together I m try to anyhow but and I'll show you what they are in there they're not a backing nut if I can find it now all right way in there they're actually just a pressed into the metal and threaded so I don't think there's any kind of backing nut it's just a a thicker piece of steel it looks like pushed in punched in steel and then threaded in I don't know if those were meant to be self-tappers. They don't seem to have a self-tapping head on them, but they are tapered a bit. Anyhow, they are a little different. There were no washers on them, but I'll keep them with it and try not to damage these. But right now, which I forgot to mention, was these uh, rear cylinder lower brackets that hold it to the body. They have to come off. So they're a half inch bolt head on them so I'm doing that right now so I'll get those off and we'll go from there well there you go I got these off these lower uh, cylinder mounts rear cylinder mounts for the long cylinders they just come up two bolts come up from the bottom nothing special uh, half inch head on them it's a star washer pretty straightforward so I got both of those off. And what else is there in this old buggy to get off? There's a few clips. Uh, there's some work around, like I mentioned. There's a just miscellaneous stuff. But for the most part, this car is pretty much stripped. Other than the rear end is still in it. I'm using that for support. Um, yeah. So now it's uh, planning the rust repair. 
Anyway, so I'm going to think about that, the best approach to do it. And I'm going to call it quits on this video. Uh, really appreciate you staying in there and watching my videos and subscribing and uh, commenting. Great comments. Uh, hopefully this is helpful to someone that's doing this type of work. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.